death. It's a bit of a morbid subject, really, isn't it? Oh, crap. Wait, hang on a minute. That's not death. That's wrath. No, war. No, that's wrath. This is death. No, nope, that's not death. That's wisdom. Wisdom? Oh, yeah, that's the one. Death. Death! <laughs> Death is coming! Death is here! Death is outside! There's no escape! Who said knocking at the door? <laughs> yes. It's death. Let it be. Who will be next? You? <laughs> Maybe you. Starscream! The pride of the Cybertron War Academy! Okay, okay, hold on. Keep calm. Don't change the channel. It's not what you think. I've got a point. Honestly. Did you really think you could fool me? Did you? Throw hat! Welcome back to the corner. This week I've managed to extract Gavatron and that bone-faced guy from my house, and we're back to normal. Except... Normally I do a lot of videos on Transformers the cartoon, on toys, and some discussions about various different bits and pieces in the collecting world. Something you may not have recognised me for talking about a lot is Transformers the movie. And uh, it's a big part of the Transformers lore, if you like, and a big part of my history. I think I've probably watched the movie more times than I've watched any of the episodes. And the reason why I bring this up is because last week, before Bonehead and Gav invaded my house, uh, there was a post put up by a fellow YouTube community member, Bill Ledsom, who's also a follower of mine, thanks Bill, um, who put up a post about some storyboards that have been ex expanded upon and made into a actual video on YouTube by SCI Batron. And if you haven't seen this video, it's playing up here in the corner right now. It's a great little uh, scene that was cut from the original G1 movie. The storyboards are still available and you can see them online. Uh, but they're starting to reanimate them and hopefully they're going to actually fill them in and colour them and make a little sort of mini epilogue out of them. And this got me thinking. The movie was a great one scene kind of fight between the Autobots and the Decepticons and then obviously you had all the other bits and pieces that went on with Megatron and getting converted by Unicron into the new Decepticons and Unicron himself attacking all of the planets, Cybertron, so on and so forth, learning about the Junkions. However, because there's so much action, so much storyline in that movie itself, there are a whole plethora of characters that A, we don't get to see, B, who never reappear again in season three or four or onwards, and C, just never actually get to have any more story arc. And it's got me thinking that, hey, I would love to see some stories, some mini spin-off stories of some of those characters as to what's happened to them, even if it were the case that those characters were going to be killed off in the movie or in a big battle scene or even before the movie. That would be epic. I mean, maybe that's just my mentality, and I'm sinister like that, and I like to think about these things, bots dying and so on and so forth. But it's part of In 1986, Transformers took a bit of a dark turn, didn't it? Lots of killing, lots of death, lots of weird and wonderful alien characters. It was awesome. Parcel of the Transformers franchise now. You can't have a new wave of toys without killing off some of the old ones or retiring them or doing something with them. And I think it would be good for some of those characters who had a lot of screen time in Generation 1, and even the ones who didn't, to actually get some story arc. Not just that, but it would actually help some of the collectors out there to get a series or snippets of a series which they could then, you know, attach themselves to. They would have some feeling towards. So I started thinking, there are so many characters in Generation 1, Seasons 1 and 2 who just absolutely disappear. I mean, obviously we have the ones who get killed on screen, your Brawns, your Ironhide, Ratchet and Prowl, and the other bots that are seen dying in the movie, like 
Optimus Prime, of course, but there are so, so, so many more. And there are also those who didn't appear at all. Look at your Omega Supremes or your Reflectors or, you know, uh, Snarl from the Dinobots. Where was he? Uh, probably in one scene, I think. But it would be cool to see some of those characters and some of the other ones that didn't make it to the movie or who didn't even get a lot of limelight in Generation 1, like the female Autobots, Alpha Trion, these sorts of characters who could have further story arcs to, to play. And I know Alpha Trion's in Vector Sigma at this point, but again, he could have some sort of story arc to play. And I, I don't want to see all the bots just being killed. I think that would be quite boring, although it'd make for an epic fight scene, I'm sure. What I would like to see is some of the bots be, you know, going off world and doing what Sandstorm and his cohorts did, finding a new planet to live on, or finding a deep dark bunker to hide in, which they could actually come out in in season three, and other episodes in Generation 1 where they go into the depths of Cybertron, like Dweller in the Depths, and other episodes where they have to actually find elements within the depths of Cybertron to help their cause or to stop some evil plan by Galvatron, for example. There's great scope on a huge planet like Cybertron to have bots who are hidden out, either retired, doing something different, you know, have little spin-off stories for all of these characters. So my question to all of you is, if you had the opportunity to take a character, who would you like to see written in with a spin-off series, a very short epilogue or a short script or a short series for that character to showcase what happened to them either before the Great War or what happened to them after the Great War, where they went and where they died and where they did. And also to that point, who would you not like to see anything from? Who would you just like to see the story just end there, disappear? Maybe they're killed off, maybe they're decommissioned, maybe they're reformatted by Unicron at another scene point in time or some other uh, issue has occurred to them between 1984 or 5 or 6 or whatever it was that the scene was set in for Generation 1 Season 2 and 2005. And I think that this would be a really great play for a new series. Instead of just regurgitating the same old storyline again and again and again with the same characters again and again and again, let's pick up on those characters who didn't get the limelight. What do you all think? Write in to Transformers The Show, tell the guys, and maybe they'll even discuss it. For another week, I've been Rohan on Rohan's Corner. Catch you again next week. Back to the studio. Hey boys, we've been rumbled. Well, let's bounce. <laughs>